This podcast is dedicated to people who are ready to take ownership of what it means to be born with high sensory intelligence and how to bring it into service for business, career and organisations globally. Well, hello, and another very warm welcome to the High Sensory Intelligence podcast with me, Willow McIntosh, your host, founder of Illuminance and leader of the High Sensory Intelligence movement. And I am very excited to have you here today, as ever, where I would love to share more with you about this beautiful trait of High Sensory Intelligence also known as the highly sensitive person. However, as you know, if you've been following my podcast and and me and Illuminance, that I'm very passionate about shifting this label of sensitivity into the awareness of sensory intelligence. And that is very much a journey of ownership that really brings this trait into what it's designed to be used for. Now, an an important part of this process is to understand that we didn't receive the training that we needed as children, typically. There are a great deal of us, a high percentage of us, up to 50%, in fact, in the Western world that are very much misunderstood, very much misunderstood as children, not to any blame of the people that brought us up, but simply because of a lack of awareness of what this trait really means. And what I experience in us as adults is that we don't take our abilities seriously, which makes a lot of sense because the simple fact that we are processing sensory data more deeply means that we are receiving more information and that typically that information that we are receiving is not the same as the other information that people who do not have the trait are receiving. Now let me put that in a, in a bit of a more simple way. So what I mean by that is because we are known to be royal advisors In other words, we are known to be very good coaches, consultants, healers. We're very good at reading people. We're very good at seeing the signs that people display through body language, social cues that receive perhaps deeper, meaningful information that is not shared through typical language. We're very good at picking up on the, um, how do I say it? We're picking up on the, on the things that people are not telling us. So in other words, we're very good at reading people and, we've, and that what, that's what makes us very good at being coaches, being consultants, being healers. We're very good at uh, reading between the lines. Now, the way that we're actually receiving that information is typically quite profound. So often we are channeling information. So what does channeling mean? Well. Typically, when we are when we are uh, when I'm having conversations and I'm I'm helping high sensory people to talk about their gifts for the first time to recognise the abilities they have, I refer to an ability that we have where we we seem the questions seem to form in our minds that we know we need to ask the person in front of us that we may be consulting, coaching, advising in whatever context it may be in order for them to become aware of a piece of information that's within them that they need to become aware of. So we receive insights, intuition and information that helps to facilitate that process. That's one example of extrasensory data information that we are receiving as high sensory intelligent people. Another example is that we may be receiving feelings in our bodies because we have high levels of empathy, we have high levels of mirror neurons, and we are able to sense the emotional state of the person within us. So we may be receiving particular feelings, right? There's another example. Now, the trouble is, because this tra- these abilities are misunderstood in our childhood, what happens is we, when we, when we talk about these things to our families or close friends, 
anyone who is not a high sensory intelligent person, and what I mean by that is someone who is not born with the trait, because this is a genetic personality trait. It's not, it's not a condition that happens. We are born with it. So people who are not born with it are not going to understand these things. They're not going to understand these abilities that we have that make us very good at the work that we do in the world. So then what happens is we feel it's difficult for us to believe in these things if the people in front of us are not um, acknowledging or understanding what we're talking about, especially when we're younger. So that means that we are rejecting those things in ourselves or perhaps the people that we're telling about it are rejecting it simply because they don't understand it. Things we don't understand tend to make us frightened in some way and we will pass off those things. Especially if, a if our ch child comes to us and starts talking about an ability they have like this, well, that may be a flag of concern for us. We may think to ourselves, well, I don't really, I, I advise that you don't go around saying that to people because they're probably going to not understand it and they're probably going to reject it. So I'm going to teach you not to share that information with anyone because it's probably not going to do you any good. So then the child, as we're growing up, we then hear that as, okay, so that part of myself is not to be owned by me. In other words, it's, it's putting me at risk if I own that part of myself, if I talk about that part of myself, or if I try to use that part of myself, there's a risk associated with that. So therefore, I'm going to close that part of me down. So much of the facilitation work that I do with high sensory people is helping them to recognize that those abilities, being able to channel information, being able to receive uh, feelings, being able to tune into the energy of environments, being able to sense these, these, um, these fine energetic cues and sensory data information that's coming in, much of my work is about stopping a high sensory person in their tracks and inviting them to feel good about that, inviting them to own that, inviting them to recognize that that is a very important part of who they are. It's fundamental to the work that they are here to do. It is the backbone to their ability and however that may be of service to the clients or to whoever they're going to be working with. This is one of the biggest hurdles and actually one of the easiest steps that we must all make as high sensory intelligent people is to recognize that we have these extrasensory abilities. It's no good us walking around pretending that that's not the case. It's definitely not healthy for us to close those down and to reject those parts of ourselves. It's not healthy to reject any part of ourselves. It is healthy to acknowledge and own, especially the gifts that we are born with, because they are directly aligned with our purpose, with the deeper meaning of how the world, what the world means to us, which is very much aligned with, the, with our, our inner purpose. It's all linked together, so nature doesn't make mistakes. We, are all, we all have a role to play in a particular area of service. So we are, there are parts of life that come easy to all of us, and those are associated with our gifts. Now, those, those abilities that we have, those areas of life that come more easily to us, are always aligned with, the, uh, with, with our purpose and what is of greater importance to us about the world. So our gifts align with our service, with our purpose and how we should be of service. It's how we're designed, it's how all animals are designed. So with high sensory people, we must recognize these gifts and abilities that we have in order for us to become more clear about what our purpose is in how we are here to be of service and therefore how we can then utilize these gifts in a way where we can develop and hone and evolve them and especially take ownership of them so they can become of use to us. It's a very unhappy place to be <clears throat> trying to be someone else. The world literally changes color for us as high sensory people and becomes a much easier place to live and we become a much easier person to live with 
when we acknowledge and take ourselves seriously, take our identity seriously, and actually what we are here to do. That makes life much, much easier for us. So it means that we can come out of the shadows, essentially. It means that we can stop hiding. It means that we can stop being scared about actually inquiring and becoming curious about who we actually are and what we are here to do so we can actually make a difference in the world and we can um, make a difference to ourselves so we can actually have a much closer relationship to ourselves. I was just about to sneeze then, I was fighting the sneeze and it threw my thought pattern a little bit so I'm just going to try and pick that up a bit. So <clears throat> essentially what this what I'm leading to here in this piece, it is about starting with the fact, excuse me, um, it is about starting with the fact that we are different to other people. We have particular abilities, we have particular challenges, yes, 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 we have to have a more strict um, self-care schedule, we can't overdo it on a consistent basis we must have more downtime we must allow ourselves to replenish because we have uh, because we have a, a a more powerful processor in ourselves and I don't mean to say that we're better or worse than anyone else that does or doesn't have the trait but we are processing data more deeply and that's taking its toll so we have to learn to recuperate and fortunately we recuperate very quickly but it, it's got to start with the awareness that we are different we are processing the world around us in a different way to other people. Nature has given us this ability for a very specific reason. The next step is then to say, okay, so how is that working through me? What is that actually allowing me to accomplish in the world? What are the abilities that that extra processing is giving me? Well, it's giving us, as we know, higher levels of empathy, intuition, creativity, and visionary abilities. It's also allowing us to pick up on this extra sensory data. It means that we are more aware of changes to in the subtleties in the environment around us. It means that we're typically very good at understanding and reading people. So right there, that's got to be the starting point. That's got to be the awareness and the curiosity to think, right, well, let's now get serious about that and actually consider properly what I, what I can do with that. Because it's not about thinking, hmm, okay, so I'm processing data more deeply. It's, it's challenging to live with the trait of sensory processing sensitivity, so I better hide and not you know, share too much, or I better not kind of step up my comfort zone or, or talk about my abilities. That is almost like putting our finger up to nature, <laughs> to mother nature that, 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 is, that is actually rejecting the gift that mother nature has given us for a very specific reason and 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 that's going to make us miserable because we are a part of nature and rejecting any part of ourselves results in depression it results in um, mental illness <clears throat> a, a, a consistent negative critical thought process on a consistent basis is now known to cause depression and quite rightly so of course it's going to cause depression if we're continuously telling ourselves that there's something wrong with us then that's not going to lead to a healthy inner environment so we've got to turn it totally around the other way we have to let go of whatever the conditioning has been up to this point and we have to get courageous enough to go back to the drawing board, start again and get very honest with ourselves about who we actually are and what actually makes us happy in the world and what it is that is driving us to want to make change and be of service and then to recognise the fact that this ability is giving us an advantage in that area. So whatever area of life that fascinates you, let me tell you, your sensory intelligence is designed to support that. Of course it is. Nature has given you a particular role to fulfil in the world and she's also given you, if we think of Mother Nature in these terms, Mother Nature has also given you the tools that you need in your makeup as a human being in order to fulfil that purpose. So that is what I'm talking about 
about taking it seriously, about considering why have you personally been born with this trait and what are you supposed to be doing with it? And to bless and let go of any, of, uh, any critical you know, um, rejection that you've received from whoever it may have been in your life and also the rejection that you've been giving yourself for many years potentially and, and have the courage to make a choice in every moment where you, it's now time for you to shift that awareness into one of being inquisitive and curious and wanting to explore and dive into and hone the gifts that you've had all of your life. And right there, that is one of the most powerful ways to make a shift into taking ownership of your high sensory intelligence. It's a life changing decision because there is a total recognition of who you are. The fundamental core of your purpose here will be recognized through the way the trait is running through you. That is one of the most powerful things that anyone can do in their lives, a process of self-actualization, a deep process of self-love, recognition and acknowledgement with the intention of serving others as a result of that recognition. There is no higher service for us as human beings, but it has to begin with a recognition of our gifts and abilities and how we are here to serve. There's no other way that it can be done. And, excuse me, because we have been misunderstood in our development as high sensory intelligent people, this is where it's got to start for us. We have to recognize that yes, we have different needs, we have different abilities, we have different ways of seeing the world, and we have different ways of being successful as entrepreneurs. And many, many of us are born to be entrepreneurs in order for us to be effective self-employed coaches, healers, consultants, and advisors. That tends to be the way that we go. Well, for the, to make that work and for us to be successful in that field, it's got to start from a place of self-recognition and being very honest about what that actually means in terms of our innate abilities. Then comes the confidence to drive a business forwards in order to promote ourselves and in order to get ourselves out into the world with all of the things that are involved in that in terms of in terms of, of supplying a service to people, because that's what we're doing, that has to start with self-recognition and confidence. It can't be done without that foundation. It will just fall over. And, and I'm sure, you know, as, as many business owners and entrepreneurs listening right now, you, may, you, you, know that, you know that personally. You know, if we go into something half-hearted and we don't believe in ourselves properly, then, you know, <clears throat> we're not going to have the... We're not, it's not going to have the strength to weather the storms of business and, and what it means to be in business in the world. So that's where it has to begin. And it begins, as I say again, with this being curious enough and inquisitive enough to get curious enough about what it is that you are really good at as a result of having the trait of high sensory intelligence. Learning to trust that, take it seriously, develop it, get out there, try it, love it, love yourself have fun, be in joy as you are in this process. Understand that self-actualization is a process of joy. It is a wonderful awakening to the truth of who you are, and that is all based in joy. So have fun with it, take the leap of faith, as John Burroughs once said, leap and the net will appear, and life will hold you, it will support you, and you will discover for yourself just how valuable your gifts and services are as a high sensory intelligent person. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Join me on the next masterclass where I'll show you how to reveal your own high sensory intelligence, bringing you into alignment with your true purpose, career, business and personal success. To register your place today, visit highsensoryintelligence.com.